Hello and welcome to another AY McDonald how-to. My name is Quinn McCullough and today we are going to show you how to repair a jet pump. If you are unsure if the power has been disconnected, check the input power posts of the pressure switch with a voltage meter. If you are not comfortable with confirming the power has been disconnected, please consult an electrician. Next, open a faucet or some other form of discharge after the pump in order to relieve the pressure in the pump and piping system. Close any valves before or after the pump in order to isolate the pump and reduce the amount of the system that might need to be drained. Remove the drain plug in the bottom of the pump and wait for it to drain completely. If the inlet and or outlet piping needs to be removed in order to separate the motor from the pump body, that can be done at this time. Now that you've completed the disconnection process, start by loosening the compression nut on the tube that connects the pressure switch to the pump body and remove the tube from the pump body end of the tube. Remove the four bolts that hold the pump body to the motor adapter. Pull the motor away from the pump body. Keep in mind, if the pump has been installed for a while, it may need to be gently tapped with a plastic dead blow hammer in order to free the motor adapter from the body. Make sure to inspect the pump body and motor adapter o-ring for wear or damage. Next, remove the three screws that hold the diffuser to the motor adapter and then remove the diffuser and check for wear or damage. Now, using a flathead screwdriver, hold the motor shaft and loosen the impeller by spinning it in a counterclockwise direction and remove and check for damage or wear. Use the flathead screwdriver again to gently pry up on the mechanical seal, then rotate the motor shaft slightly and gently pry up again. Repeat turning and prying until the mechanical seal is removed from the motor shaft and inspect the removed seal for damage or wear. Remove the four bolts that hold the motor adapter to the motor and lift the motor adapter off the motor, making sure not to let the stationary part of the seal that is still inside the motor adapter come in contact with the motor shaft. Don't forget to check the motor adapter and the stationary part of the mechanical seal for damage or wear. To replace the stationary part of the mechanical seal, flip the motor adapter over so that the pump side is laid flat on the table. Press on the back side of the seal in order to free the seal from the motor adapter. If you are having trouble pressing out the old seal, you may need to use something like a socket that fits through the hole to get it out. At this point, we recommend you check the motor for any abnormal shaft noise when it's spun or if the motor has any vertical or horizontal play in the motor shaft. To install the new seal, first place the motor adapter with the motor side down on the table. Then press the seal down into the pocket of the motor adapter. Spraying the motor adapter and seal with water can aid in installing the seal, but do not use any type of lubricant other than water. If you look from the motor side of the adapter, you can see if the seal has been pressed in fully. Once the seal is pressed into the motor adapter, carefully place the motor adapter over the motor shaft. Make sure to be very careful on this step to ensure the seal does not come in contact with the motor shaft because this part of the seal is a ceramic material that is very delicate and can be easily damaged. Now that you've installed the new seal, reinstall the four bolts attaching the motor adapter to the motor and reinstall the mechanical seal over top of the motor shaft. If the seal is not all the way seated when you spin the impeller onto the motor shaft, it will press the seal down to the correct height. Thread the impeller onto the motor shaft until the motor shaft starts to turn with the impeller. Then use a flathead screwdriver inserted into the interior of the impeller to hold the motor shaft while you spin the impeller on in the clockwise direction until it contacts the stop shoulder. Next, place the diffuser onto the motor adapter, paying attention to be sure that the diffuser has the correct orientation using the markings on the front of the diffuser. Attach the diffuser to the motor adapter using the three screws. Inspect the nozzle and venturi for damage, wear, and debris, and are threaded in tight. In some pumps, the venturi and nozzle will be separate parts, so if either of those need to be replaced, the following are directions for removal. For the venturi, use pliers to turn it counterclockwise to unthread it from the pump housing, and the nozzle will need to be unthreaded from the pump body using the correct size socket and wrench extension. Carefully lift the motor and align the motor shaft with the venturi and insert the motor into the pump body. Line up the bolt holes and then thread in the four bolts that hold the motor adapter to the pump body and tighten down. Now, insert the pressure switch tube into the compression fitting that connects the tube to the pump body and tighten the compression nut. Reconnect any suction and or discharge piping that was disconnected in order to work on the pump. Reopen pump isolating valves if equipped. Once that is finished, you can prime the pump, but be careful not to run the pump dry because that can damage the seal and cause leaking. Finally, 
Reconnect the power to the pump and check for leaks and listen for any abnormal sounds. Again, my name is Quinn McCullough and thanks for watching this AY McDonald how-to. Still have questions? Give us a call at 1-800-AY-CARES. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest.